Queen Ant. Summer is the dream season for us ant keeping enthusiasts, since most ant species swarm to have their nuptial flights during this time. It's called the ant mating season for a reason. And I caught some queens too during the past couple of months. How many? Let's see. First catching dish. As you see, I had to group some queens together. Another here. Couple more. Okay, how many of these containers can I possibly pull out of this little bag. There we go! I knew I had more of them! Hello and welcome or welcome back to Ants Vienna! September While most of queen ant nuptial flights should be coming to an end, don't forget that this time of year is perfect for searching and catching harvester ant queens, like Mesor. In this video, however, we will focus on all the queens that I pulled out of this bag earlier. So, what am I going to do with all those queens? Before I confess that, let me tell you how I even came to catch this many queen ants in the first place. A few weeks ago, a relative called me on the phone saying there were ants everywhere. I mean, just that phrase, ants everywhere. What a better place for me as an ant keeper to be. So. I rushed over as fast as I could and upon closer inspection I found out she had a huge Lasius Flavus colony swarming indoors. The ants had multiple entrance points in the house. Here we are watching one of them. So yeah, it was quite obvious that the ants were trying to leave the house. So. We opened all doors and windows to assist them on their way to the garden. And while a few of them weren't lucky enough and got caught in spider webs, the majority made it outside safely. You can see a male stuck here. After that, it was only a matter of waiting which we did with a nice barbecue. By the evening, most alates were done mating outside and I knew the young, now fertilized queens would be looking for nesting spots in the garden. So, I went looking and, you guessed it, I found quite a few queen ants. Okay, so what is the point of gathering all those quinans and what do I plan to do with them? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will be running an experiment. An ant experiment. And for this, we will need some of the equipment that Aesthetic Ants sent me last time. Feel free to check that unboxing video out in the corner. Specifically, we will be using his new range of acrylic ant farms as we need a very clear view of everything that is going to happen. This mini ant feeder might also prove useful. So let's check that acrylic ant farm out for real now.
Hmm. It seems this soft plastic protector is screwed on and won't be coming off perfectly. Unless we use a screwdriver. There you go, nest is free, now up to the cover. Whoa, nice, this acrylic is matte. I expected it to be glossy and attract fingerprints like a magnet, but I was wrong. I really like how this looks and feels. Of course, this is still a nest module, so we will need some tubes to connect it to other parts of our experimental environment. Like the small artwork. I think this is called a test tube and outworld and it has some ventilation holes so the ants are able to breathe. And it opens like this. Now we will connect that aesthetic ant acrylic nest with the test tube mini outworld through the one hole and seal the other hole with some cotton, so the ants will not be able to escape. We will also need a temporary container to unload all these queens and guide them to our formicarium setup. Let me add some sand, so it feels more natural to them. Connect it, and voila! This will be the setup for our 13 Quinant experiment. Let us go over it quickly. We have a landing container, the acrylic nest for excellent visibility of the ants, and a little outward to feed them in the future. Now some final touches. Let me apply some escape prevention oil. And water the sand just a bit, since those queen were in these little catching jars for around 3 hours now, and they are definitely thirsty. Now! Let the experiment begin. First queen to go in. See? I told you she would be thirsty. There goes another queen. Okay, so now we're adding quinans to our setup. But what exactly are we testing? You see, those are Lazius Flavus queens. And Lazius Flavus are known to be both polygynous and also for exercising pleomitrosis. So what are these terms and is there any difference between them? Yes, 
there is a big difference between those two terms. C. Polygenous ant species accept the majority of queens that come into a nest. Both the queens accept each other, but also the workers accept more than one dominant queen within the colony. On the other hand, pleometrosis is a phenomenon where many queens start digging a nest and laying eggs together, a so-called nesting chamber. However, later on, few or even a single of those queens survives and becomes the dominant one. It can come to fights both between the queens, but the workers could also kill the queens that are not producing enough eggs or that are not deemed as fruitful enough by the workers. To put it in simple words, with our experiment, we are going to test how friendly Lazius Flavus Quinans really are to each other and if there are any problems, we will be able to monitor exactly what the cause of this problem is and when it all happens. I am also watering the nest, since Lazius ants usually nest underground and like humid nesting areas. Okay, upon closer inspection, it seems that I caught a queen of another species. This is definitely no Lazius flavus. I would tip on Lazius niger, black with abdomen that shimmers gold in the right light. Anyway, we are keeping this one separate from the others, as Lazius niger are strictly monogenous and she would fight the others to the death and that would be trouble for our experiment. Thankfully, I always have a test tube nearby if I need one. More queens are joining in. Now we have eight in there. Whoa, 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 wait! Did you see that? She clearly ran away from her. This queen also looks slightly bigger. Could it be? Look, the others are running too. Okay, guys, we need to act. I'm getting her out of there. Where are my pliers? Okay, we got her. Okay, guys, this is another Lazius Niger queen. It seems that Lazius Niger were also swarming in my relative's garden that day. Okay, that's it. I'm now checking the queens that go in thoroughly before tossing them in, just in case. I'm also going to feed them a little with this adorable tiny ant feeder. Some sugar water refreshment for the ladies. Since it's getting quite busy at the front gate, the next one will be entering through the back door. She is examining her surroundings And do we have a winner? She is in the tube, but not yet in the nest She is careful Look at that! We've got a winner! From the other side comes the first one to enter the nest It was close guys Okay now, the one from the right has also joined in. Do you see? The wingless one has gone straight for the nest chamber with the highest humidity. Let us add two more queens and close it up. Meanwhile, we shall swing to the bottom chamber and watch number one. I filtered out a total of three Lazius Niger queens during the whole process. I did not account for them, 
but we'll see. Maybe I'll end up giving them away to you guys. This is the final form of our ant experiment setup, containing 13 Lasius Flavos Quinans, all possible candidates for the throne. No, not the British one. So, will there be more queens to reign together, or will a single one rise above all others? Will they fight each other? If so, when is it going to happen? And what will the workers do after they hatch? Only time can answer these questions. Subscribe to Ants Vienna if you haven't already, so you don't miss any update videos to this ant experiment. Meanwhile, you may want to check out the videos that appear on your screen right now. I'll see you there.